It's time now for your weekly fishing reports and real-time outdoor news. This is the Southwest Outdoors Report, powered by Chevy Silverado, the official truck of the outdoors. Hi everybody, on a cold morning, I'd like to welcome you in to the Sooner State of Oklahoma. Your Southwest Outdoors Report is on the road today for the very first time in our 10 year history at Lake Conowa. Lake Conowa is about a 1500 surface acre, relatively small lake located just north of Ada, Oklahoma, home of East Central State University here in the Sooner State. Now, this lake is stocked with hybrid stripers, white bass, and some good quality sized largemouth bass. It's gonna be a challenge today because I've never seen the lake, never been on it before, never fished it, don't know much about it. So we're just gonna go out, scout around, do a little exploring, and you get to go along with us. And while we're out doing that, you're going around the region for your very latest fishing reports from the rest of Oklahoma with Gary Dallahan, Louisiana with Cajun Phil and Kevin, Saltwater Report down on the Texas Gulf Coast with Bill Olson, and the Freshwater Report in the Lone Star State with Brian Hughes. Also on this week's Lawrence Hot Lake of the Week, I'll be showing you a good wintertime power plant lake in East Texas at Lake Monticello. We'll have your big catch of the week, the Academy Wright stuff showing you the equipment you'll need for the upcoming cold wintertime months and much more. Well, as you can see right here in the background, the Oklahoma Gas and Electric Power Plant is generating. This is a power plant lake, so it'll be a good bet right through the wintertime months. The water here is artificially warmed by that power plant. So I'm gonna launch the Nitro Z8 in Lake Conowa. We're taking you back to the FSN studios. Here's Julie with your Chevy Weekend Planner. Your prime fishing hours this weekend will be starting around five in the morning and again at about five in the evening. Also, the tables indicate it should be some of the best fishing of the month. Expect the sun to rise at 7.01 a.m. and set at 5.24 p.m. And we'll have a crescent moon 38% visible. Stay with us, we've got fishing updates from around the entire region. And I'll be back with Bassmaster Elite Angler Edwin Evers on the Ask the Pro feature. The Southwest Outdoors Report, powered by Chevy, is brought to you by Chevy Silverado, the official truck of the outdoors. Buy quality award-winning tracker boats. Fish the finest. Lawrence, maker of the HDS, high definition systems, and Academy, right stuff, low price, every day. There's one. What do we got? Hope it's a bass. Hey, welcome back everybody. You're on your Southwest Outdoors report today. There he is. We're fishing Lake Conowa today up in the east central part of Oklahoma. Not much to him, but it's a little bass to get it started. Started off largemouth fishing this morning. We're uh, just kind of checking the lake out, never been on it before, so uh, having to see what's in it. It's got largemouth hybrids and white bass in it. That's just a little small largemouth. We'll let him go back. And uh, I'm fishing to start off with, with a lipless rattling crankbait. You can see that there, it uh, imitates a shad. And uh, from what I've found so far, the lake is real shallow. And uh, I'm fishing anywhere from four to six, eight feet deep, and I'm looking for grass beds. So as you can see right in front of me here, there's a long reed point that comes out. And uh, out here in front of it, there's some little scattered patches of grass. A little bit of hydrilla, but mostly just some kind of stringy grass. But uh, that fish was up there right off that point. So it's a good start anyway, got a bite. It's cold this morning, but this is a artificially warmed power plant lake and the surface temperature is about 65 degrees, even though the air temperature this morning was below freezing. All right, let's get started on your regional fishing reports from the rest of the region. Let's check with Gary Dallahan, the rest of Oklahoma. Hey, the big news in Oklahoma this past week is the Bassmaster Classic is coming to Oklahoma. Year 2013, February 22nd through 24th, fishing Grand Lake. Weigh-in will take place downtown Tulsa, the BOK Center, 
and nearby Tulsa Convention Center will house the great outdoor expo that goes along in conjunction with that. Put it on your calendar, make sure you're there. It's gonna attract 70,000 people over the three days of the tournament, have an economic impact of 26 million to the Tulsa area. As far as fishing right now, good reports coming in from all across the state. I've run across guys that are catching white bass, largemouth, crappie, and catfish on a single outing. And the cat fishermen in particular are saying the fishing is really good right now. Most of the guys that are jug fishing are saying that those fish are coming from 18 to 22 feet using cut bait. The rod and reel guys are saying they're also catching them down about that same depth as well as shallower on some of the points. Again, cut shad, live worms are hard to beat for catfish. Also ran into Bill Kelly off of a creek on the Grand River system, crappie fishing. Had a great visit with him. He tells me that November and December are his favorite times of months to crappie fish in Oklahoma. He was catching them pretty good on this particular day. He says it's only gonna get better, and he says if it's snowing, make sure you go crappie fishing because they really bite. One thing about it, you can't catch them if you don't go. Well, we've been fishing for a couple of hours since you last saw me and caught several fish, and I didn't have time to show them all on camera in a short show like this, so I put a couple in the live well, and I just wanted to show you a couple of more fish from Lake Conowa, and uh, we're gonna throw these fish back. That one is going back, and let's see if I can snag the rest of these here without them going crazy. There's another one like there. These would all just be good keeper size fish. And actually there's uh, three or four more of them in here. There's one right there. Had a good morning so far. Good bass fishing here at Lake Conway. There's a couple of more in there as well, but just to give you some idea, we're catching these fish on a lipless rattling crankbait. And then we're also catching some on a little plastic worm, pulling it through the outside edges of these little patches of grass beds out off Main Lake Point. Stay with us when we come back. Cajun Phil and Kevin give you the fishing reports from Louisiana. The Southwest Outdoors Report, powered by Chevy, is brought to you by Strin, the standard of dependability, by Gene LaRue Lures and Bobby Garland Baits, quality soft plastic baits made in Oklahoma with American pride, by Chevy Silverado, the official truck of the outdoors, and Mercury Marine. There's one. White bass. Not bad. All right. Hey, there's another species in Lake Conowa. Welcome back, everybody. There is a white bass. Evidently, this lake is just loaded with them, and I will tell you that we've caught, um, I'm gonna guess 25 or 30 white bass about that size, so I thought we'd go ahead and show you one of them. They're biting a the jigging spoon, that and a little Bobby Garland slab slayer on a Moglo jig head. But those are your two good baits for white bass in this lake. I want to mention something you can see right here behind me. There's the power plant. And power plant fishing is great all through the wintertime for two reasons. Number one is current. That thing generates all winter long. I'm going to go ahead and put this fish back. That power plant is going to generate all winter long, and it creates a circular current throughout this lake, and actually any power plant lake has current in it all through the wintertime months. The second thing, though, is it artificially heats the water, and uh, particularly on the discharge side, the water is much warmer than it is anywhere else in the lake and on any other cold water lake throughout the region, so your chances are a lot better. Now, the other thing they have in this lake, and haven't caught one of those and it doesn't look like we're going to here, it's getting late in the afternoon, is a hybrid striped bass. But I've seen several pictures on some websites, and there are a couple of guys that guide on this lake, and some fantastic pictures of good hybrids crossed between a striped bass and a white bass that are doing very well in this lake as well. So you throw this spoon around very much, and you'll catch white bass and hybrid stripers. Let's go east right now to Louisiana and check in with Cajun Phil and Kevin. Hi friends, Cajun Phil here with your Fox Louisiana Fisher Report. Well, I tell you what, you know, normally when duck season starts, we're really excited. Well, we're kind of excited because every morning, Kevin's been going out, four man limited ducks by around 7.30, 7.45. But the bad news was the fishing right now on Calcasieu Lake is so unbelievable that he really hated to stop fishing to start duck hunting. But I tell you what, the last 11 days before duck season, 
He limited out with a four man limit of speckled trout, which is 60, also 20 reds. And the last four days that he fished, he got 40 flounder, 60 specks, and 20 reds each and every day. So Calcasieu Lake right now is on fire. But you know, it's not just Calcasieu Lake. We talked to Captain Jack down in Delacroix, Louisiana. He's catching limits of speckled trout and redfish. Over there, they're catching most of their specks on the birds, and they use it live shrimp. Here, they were catching them on bass assassin plastics. Also talked to Tofield Bourgeois. He's still making his flights over down around the islands, and he's catching lots of big speckled trout. They're wading down there, and he's catching them up to four and five pounds. Time right now for this week's Little Rants, Hot Lake of the Week. And on this week's show, since we're at Lake Conowa, which is a power plant lake in Oklahoma, I thought I would show you another power plant lake for you Texas bass fishermen over in East Texas. It's Lake Monticello, a good power plant lake, good right through the wintertime months. Let's locate it for you on the Lawrence HDS-10. It's southwest of Mount Pleasant, Texas, south of I-30. We zoom in to show you three lakes. They're all connected. Cypress Springs is on the west. Bob Sandlin is on the south. Monticello is on the north. Next, we switch to the Navionics Hot Maps Platinum software and zoom in to isolate Lake Monticello. The dam is on the south end. The power plant is on the east side. The water intake is on the lower end, and the discharge for the hot water channel is on the north end. The entire upper end of the lake is flooded timber. It's shallow with a silted in creek channel running right down through the middle. You can fish any of that standing timber in the edge of the creek channel. The south end, south of the bridge, is open water. You can fish around points, any shoreline, and any scattered grass patches you find. I really think a 10-inch black Jean LaRue plastic worm is your best all-around bet for those wintertime months at Lake Monticello. I fished it a lot. I've caught lots of fish out of that lake. It would be a good bet for you this winter. That's this week's Lawrence Hot Lake of the Week. Stay with us. When we come back, Brian Hughes is next up with your Texas Freshwater Fishing Report, followed by Bill Olson down on the coast. The Southwest Outdoors Report, powered by Chevy, is brought to you by Abu Garcia for life. By Navionics. Enjoy Navionics anytime, anywhere. By Whataburger, just like you like it and by Motor Guide Trolling Motors. There's something. Not huge, but there. About a bass, look at here. All right. Boy, he has got a mouthful of that crankbait there. All right, hey, welcome back everybody. You're on your Southwest Outdoors report today. We're fishing today at Lake Conowa, and uh, I'm having trouble acclimating to this lake a little bit. It's a real shallow silted in lake. By the way, here's a little bit of information. This lake was uh, built in 1968, so it's had a long time here to silt, and uh, there's just not a lot of cover, not a lot of stuff to throw at in the water. So what we're having to do is fish out off these long points and find grass beds. And so as you can see here in front of, of us, it's just a lot of open water fishing. But right there to your left, there's a little reed point that comes out. You can see that out off of that is a real gradual shallow slope. And it slopes off from like two feet down to like six feet. And that's the range probably that you're going to be doing a lot of fishing in this lake. Well, I'm going to have to take the pliers after that one, but just a good chunky, solid, largemouth bass there. The color in this water is real good. It's just kind of that green color. You can see down about a foot, a foot and a half. Perfect for bass fishing. This lake ought to be good right through the winter time. Let's move along right now and check on some more of your fishing reports in your area. Let's go down to Texas. Here's Brian Hughes. Hi everybody and welcome to this week's Lone Star Lakes brought to you by Wild Point Whitetails who remind you, you can extend your season by hunting with their MLD permits. Now this week we're going to go to Palestine where guide Ricky Vandergriff says at last report you could still launch at the villages. You'll need to be very careful as you leave the marina area headed out to the main lake. Once you do get on the lake you can catch catfish up at the bridges around High Saw and Leadbetter. You'll want to use your standard prepared catfish baits or cut bait for these Palestine catfish. Now, up by the dam, you'll catch bass early on topwaters, then switch over 
to a shaky head rig, use about a quarter ounce weight, and fish down about 10 feet for your bass there at Palestine. Now, moving over to Ray Roberts, some of the best sand bass action of the entire year going on right now. You'll find these under the bird. They're easy to catch. Just use your spoon and or live minnows for those sandies at Ray Roberts. That's this week's Lone Star Lakes brought to you by Wild Point Whitetails. Now let's check in with Mr. Bill Olson. He's on the coast. Hi folks, this week's report is brought to you by Port Aransas on Mustang Island. Surrounded by pristine bays, estuaries, and the deep blue waters of the Gulf of Mexico, Port A is truly the fishing capital of Texas. Come fish, golf, and play Texas Island style. For more information, visit the website on the screen. Well, bird activity on the south end of Sabine Lake, East Galveston Bay, and at the mouth of the Trinity River has produced solid speckled trout and redfish catches. Best efforts to fish around skittish birds has been to use one half ounce jig heads to make long cast and rig those with white soft plastics with a green tail. Now the lack of freshwater runoff has most of the rivers that empty into the upper Texas Coast Bay from Sabine to the Guadalupe River holding good numbers of trout. Look for this pattern to increase as water temperatures continue a slow decline. Be sure and fish the flats and the drops. Now flounder activity continues to be very good in areas that drain back marshes and flats along the entire Texas coast. Shrimp, finger mullet, and mud minnows have been the preferred live bait. On the lower Laguna Madre from Laguna Vista to south of Cullens, trout have been caught mainly in deeper potholes on a variety of artificial lures and cut bait. On the middle coast, anglers continue to score well around Spoil Islands in Redfish Bay as well as along the Lydia Ann Channel. Copano Bay is starting to heat up with specks relating to slightly deeper shell and mud bottoms. This weekend, both Saturday and Sunday have a double tide schedule of two high and two low tides each day. I'm Bill Olson and I'll see you on the coast. Hey, before we head to our next break, I'd like to make a big announcement on this week's show. Coming up during our off season from mid-December through mid-March, we're launching our first ever Southwest Outdoors Report sweepstakes. You're going to have a chance to win fantastic prizes from all of our sponsor partners here on the show. To get all the information, you need to go to the sweepstakes tab on our Facebook page. So you'll need to be sure and like or follow the Facebook page in order to be able to register and enter and win prizes in the upcoming sweepstakes. So get yourself on the Facebook page, click the like link, and be ready to enter once the entry forms go up right at the end of the 2011 season of your Southwest Outdoors Report. It's gonna be exciting and a great way for you to stay in touch with us right through the off season. Stay with us. When we come back, we'll have your Ask the Pro, the Big Catch, and the Academy right stuff. The Southwest Outdoors Report, powered by Chevy, is brought to you by Academy. Right stuff, low price, every day. Nitro Performance Bass Boats, fish your best in a nitro. Costa Del Mar Sunglasses, see what's out there. And by Chevy Silverado, the official truck of the outdoors. It's time now for our Ask the Pro feature. Our question this week is from Debbie in Oklahoma who asks, when fishing with crankbaits, what type of line is best? For the answer, let's check with Bassmaster Elite Angler, Edwin Evers. When choosing your line size on your crankbaits, this is a very, very critical element. Line size is gonna dictate how well that bait runs and how deep you're gonna get that bait. Trying to keep a bait up, use bigger line. Trying to get a bait down deep, use smaller line. The smaller the diameter line, the deeper that bait's gonna go, the less resistance it has coming through the water column. Anywhere between 10 to 20 pound test is what I'm gonna use. I don't ever go smaller than 10, and on big crankbaits, 12 is as small as I'll go. Little crankbaits, you can get away with 10 pound test. Always use fluorocarbon for the most part. You're gonna get a lot more feel, a lot deeper depth out of your crankbaits using fluorocarbon. Thanks, Edwin. If you have a question for one of the pros, just visit our website at southwestoutdoorsreport.com. Click on the Ask the Pro link and send us your information. Now here's Barry with your Whataburger Big Catch of the Week. Congratulations to this week's winner of the Big Catch of the Week contest. His name is Jared Shermer. He is from Troy, Texas, and he's shown here with a 22-pound blue catfish 
He caught at Lake Limestone down in Central Texas. If you'd like to enter the contest, all you need to do is go to our website at southwestoutdoorsreport.com. You can submit your big catch of the week photo. You can send us an Ask the Pro question and much more. Next up, it's the Academy Right Stuff feature, the time on the show where I get to show you all of the equipment, baits, rods, and reels that you'll need to catch the largemouth and white bass if you're going to make a trip here to Lake Conwa in Oklahoma. Now at the top of your screen is an Abu Garcia Veritas medium action six and a half foot rod. Got it rigged up with a Revo bait cast reel, Strand fluoro cast 12 pound test line. And as you can see, we've got it rigged on a half ounce jigging spoon and I've got a single hook on that. Now the rod below that is an Abu Garcia Vendetta rod. We've got it rigged up with a Revo reel as well and a lipless rattling crankbait would be your go-to bait for fishing these grass beds here at Lake Conowa. I can't think of a better way for you to have a great chance to catch fish than to be fishing a power plant lake like the one you see right here in the background at Lake Conowa. These power plant lakes are scattered around Texas and a few in Oklahoma. Fish a power plant lake, have a lot better chance at success right through the coldest part of the winter months. We'll see you next week at 10.30 p.m. on Thursday night. Our show will replay on Saturday morning at 8 o'clock as usual. And you can always catch the current episode of our show on the front page of the website and all of our shows right past through the entire season on our YouTube channel. You can link to all that from the front page of the website. From Lake Conowa in Oklahoma, I'm Barry Stokes saying be safe, have fun. Bye-bye, y'all.